Cool. All right, so what is the point of this stream? Well, we're back to AI streams. It is not Sunday. Maybe I'll do another one tomorrow too. But there's been a couple things on my mind that I want to try out in the AI space. Coding, obviously, this is going to be about coding. Um, I'm very interested in clean code and develop and uh, testing and now AI tools. And I had a couple things I wanted to try, but I'm going to ease back into it. So this is going to be a pretty quick one. This is going to talk about some plugins that help analyze code from within ChatGPT. So first, a summary of plugins on ChatGPT. So if you pay the 20 bucks a month or whatever it is, maybe it's 10, I can't remember. Uh, you get access to plugins in ChatGPT. What? Mm. Crazy? You didn't know that? Yes. Here you go. So if I open a new chat, I obviously can choose 3.5 or 4. 4, I'm limited to 25 messages every 3 hours, which is ridiculous. I hit this already, so that's why this is going to be a short video. I'm going to show you the queries I made, and you're going to see how how this cap is, <laughs> is really slowing me down. But um, anyways... The 4.0 version is the one that has the plugins. So you get the Bing plugin, which um, lets you query the internet. Why do you need that though? If you can just use Bing, uh, uh, Bing Chat, I think as they call it. Um, I highly recommend it. They got an app you can install on your phone. Otherwise, you got to use Edge. Actually, I have Edge right here, so I'll just open that real quick. Highly recommend it. It has no limit, as far as I can tell. It's way better than Bard. I've done some tests on past streams here. But yeah, so this is Microsoft Edge. You click this little button here. You can do chat, compose, or insights, and those are all AI tools. For chat, they give you creative, balanced, or precise. Really love this. If you do precise and you ask it to do something crazy and it starts giving you back some dangerous results, they're going to cut it off. But if you do creative, you can actually get it to do more creative things. Um, and so I really like this um, temperature gauge or whatever they call it. And you get 20 messages, 4,000 characters each, in every chat. And then you just do another chat, start over. So obviously you can't hold infinite context. Uh, for that, you would probably need to use the API and pay a ton of money and have some sort of system for storing the context, like some kind of um, data layer, which is something I'm working towards on this channel. I want to get into that side of it. It's very key to a project that I want to do, but I, I don't want to go too deep too fast. So for now, let's just talk about ChatGPT and its plugin system. All right, so back on the thread. So we could search the web. Otherwise, it uses um, the model's data, which is out of date a few years ago or something. Um, the plugins are here. They're in beta. You need to turn this on in your settings. If you don't see these, I believe it's settings, beta features, turn on being turn on plugins. So everybody should have access to these now. There's no wait list. With that said, some of the plugins are still in alpha, especially the code interpreter plugin, which you may or may not have heard of, which I'm super excited for. And it's, I think it does what we're seeing here, but even better. But uh, you can interact with code using Python. It, I don't know. I don't want to undersell it. I don't want to oversell it. We'll wait until we get access to that plugin. Until then, I'm interacting with some of the the coding related plugins I found in their plugin store. Now there's what hundred hundreds of plugins. There's a lot. There's a lot of plugins here. Let's see if you look at all seventy pages worth of plugins. So hundreds of plugins here. And I started going through all of them, but I mean, just in a couple of weeks, this has grown a ton. And so instead, I ended up just searching for like code, a couple other keywords, and I went through and I installed a bunch of these. So ask the code. This one I tried first, but you, it says you give it a URL to a GitHub repo for a C Sharp project, and then it'll be able to, you know, uh, you can inspect any aspect of the code, apparently. Uh, I was able to query a non C Sharp project and it gave me like the summary for the README, but it couldn't actually read the code. So then I quickly moved over to an, a couple other ones. I think this one's another, this is Ask Your Code. This is Chat with Code. It's like, half dozen of these uh, chat with Git, and you'll see I didn't get to all of these I really only have two that I want to show you and this one this one here is claims you can test your web app without writing a single line of code just by giving it a URL 
which sounds too good to be true. So this is unrelated to what this video is about, but I do have this running in the background. It takes forever, apparently. And uh, we're going to see if this works at all. Anyways, let's talk about the coding plugins I was able to use. So you just go ahead and you install them. It's a little weird because once you start up a, a chat GPT-4 window, uh, it doesn't actually automatically enable the plugins that you want. You need to click this drop down and you need to select them. And you can only have three active at a time. That's because instead of just naming the one you want, like, hey, web pilot, go do your thing. Web pilot, by the way, is a plugin that supposedly reads web pages and PDFs. I'll try that in another video, but I tried that in the past and had issues with PDF reading. So, but anyways, sticking to the code ones. So I can't just turn on all the chat with code, chat with Git, chat with PDF and just say, analyze my code. And then it's gonna like use all three of them. No, what it's gonna do is it's gonna find something that matches my query that can solve what I'm asking it to do. So if I'm asking it to read code, it's gonna go, oh, chat with code can do that. But it's also gonna go, oh, chat with Git can do that. And it's gonna try to auto select which one I want to use, which is for, it's kind of bad because maybe I only want to use chat with Git. Anyways, I don't know which one's gonna choose and it's gonna waste a query. So what I did is I just turned on one at a time and then I used its name to try to call it out and say, hey, chat with code, go do something for me. But supposedly you don't even need to do that. Supposedly you just say, read this code and then it knows to use this plugin. Anyways, uh, probably not a great explanation, but let me show you what I actually did. So here's the query I made. Oh no, don't tell me I lost it. There it is, okay, whew, scared me. Oops, that's the window, didn't mean to do that. Oh, you can't see that, great. All right, so this one, uh, like I said, I did the, the C-sharp one as well. I, I accidentally closed the chat, so I don't have that one anymore, but um, it's only for C-sharp, so never mind that one anyways. This one called chat with code. So I just wasted a message basically by saying chat with code plugin. I only get 25 messages every three hours, so that was a waste, but I just said it. And then it says, of course, I can help you interact with your code repositories. You can perform tasks like fetching file contents, proposing code changes, discussing code implementation, and more. What would you like to do? So then I had to actually say, go ahead and summarize this Git repository. This Git repository is a Kotlin multi-platform news app, example app for iOS and Android. So all the code shared except the UI layer. Um, the UI layer for Android uses Compose, if you ever heard of that, and iOS uses Swift UI. Um, and so I'm very interested in these, these, this type of project, and I want to build one of these myself. So I want to look at what's out there already and get to know how that code is working. So I gave it that URL, asked it to summarize it, and here's what it said. The repository, KMM News app, which I think is Kotlin Multiplatform, multi-platform Mobile, I'm assuming is what KMM is. Uh, by Kashif E. It's a Kotlin multi-platform project template and sample app with everything shared except the UI. It's built with clean architecture and model view intent pattern. Here are some key, de key details about the repository. It's written in Kotlin. That's true. So there is some Swift for the um, Swift UI part. Uh, but yeah, for the most part, all the shared stuff is in Kotlin. Uh, even the data layer and all that. It uses observables. Uh, anyways, let me just read what it, it found. The repository has 247 stars and 18 forks. That I don't care about, but hey, I guess that is part of what it knows. How does it know this? Let's skip back a little. Here's the query that it actually used. Um, kind of. So it says a, it's a request to the plugin chat with code. It used an octo kit method. Don't know exactly what that means, but this is doing a repo get. So it's like, go get that repo. Here's the owner of the repo. Here's the name of the repo. And then it responds back with all this information about the repo, including, you know, the owner, how many stars it has, um, kind of a readme. I don't know if it's actually the readme content or just a description. It looks like just a description, maybe. Uh, it does seem to list even things like issues and collaboration and signings and branches. I don't think it really lists the code. Let's see, does it list all the commits? Comments, URL, issue commit, URL, content. So this is a another URL that could be used to query all of the comments for exactly, or exactly. So 
um, it's basically giving it an API that it can use to get more information. <clears throat> but I don't actually see where, so I got the topics. Let's see, where did it get this information about it, about it using model view intent, for example? Like I'm not seeing that in this response. So I'm wondering if under the hood it did some other query, um, which is interesting. We'll come back to that because you'll see in another example, it does make multiple queries sometimes, but this one just did one. So is this true? Does it really use model view intent? Well, let's figure that out. How can I see? Do they mention it here? They don't really mention it here. Do they use MVI? They do say plus MVI. So I wonder if it's from the about. That might be where they're getting it from, or these tags. So this all might just be from the description, actually. Um, yep, it's got the license, and it talks about it includes Android, Android architecture components, coroutines, iOS, Jetpack and Compose, KMMM. These are all just got to be just tags, right? Yep. Okay, so that's where it's getting all this information. Is there anything specific you would like to know about this repo? So that makes sense then. So now we know what it's not very magic. All it's really doing there is making this query that analyzes the repo at the highest level. It doesn't actually look at the code. Okay, fine. Um, and then it said that it uses material three, I believe, or maybe it didn't say that in this one. I might have got that from a different one. Let me see. Does it mention material? Okay, maybe I okay I I gave it knowledge that it didn't actually have, but let's let's see. It now it needs to look at the code in order to answer my question. I said, what Material Three components does the Android UI use? And so, what did it query this time? This time, it asked a question, so it's got a query, Material Three in file, and then the entire top level repo. So it's just looking for any reference to Material Three, and the response is ten things. And it has material3.kt, which is under the build folder. So that's just a library it's pulling in. Um, just looking. Oh, uh, anything else here? Here's another one, another build file reference. This is probably uh, the Gradle bringing in the, the dependency. Let's see, what else does it have? shape.kt okay so there's a file in here under theme uh, oh we got a viewer welcome viewer we're just looking at some code and some chat GPT stuff so yeah so this is actually doing a decent query I don't know you know I bet you what it's doing is this if I search for material 3 inside of this repo I bet you will get 10 results boom 10 files. So again, removing the magic from AI. <laughs> it's just, it's using an API, the GAB API to uh, query, do a search on a repo. Cool, that's fine. But then look at the rest of its answer. So based on those 10 files, or at least if we look at it, those 10 files don't really have the contents of the file. It just tells you the URL to get them, right? like uh, shape.kt. So we see shape.kt here, probably. Let's look. Yeah, shape.kt. In this search, it does show me the first, you know, seven lines, but that's it. Or is that all there is in this? Okay, yeah, there's a little more here. So is is that also what they see here? Let's look. Well, it sees they got the path. Um, they got a URL if they actually wanted to pull the full file, but I don't think they've done that yet. It's got the owner, all that crap about the repo. Here's a description of the repo. So this is resending all this info about the repo, but there's nothing about that file as far as I can tell. Unless I'm missing it, maybe someone in chat, do you see it? Does this say anything about what components this shape.kt file uses? I don't think it does. So that that means the next part here might be hallucinated. Let's look. So it's saying the Android UI in KMM News App Repository uses the following Material 3 components. Material 3, it's saying, or Material Theme. This is used to apply the Material Theme to the UI components of the app. I know for a fact it is using this, but this is used by all composed or modern Android apps that use Material. So, okay. Top app bar, a lot of them use it, but not all of them. Okay. Where does it say it's being used, though? Does it actually see that in the response? 
So if we go back, we searched for, do we see top app bar anywhere in here? So we have an app bar .kt. It's not actually, um, it doesn't know which components it's using most likely because it's not actually seeing anything but the file name. But if you actually look at this, I looked at it earlier, it's not technically a top app bar. It's a customized Cam M News top app bar, which uses a center aligned top app bar. So I don't know, I guess that's nitpicky, but it just was going off the name of the file app bar. It must be right. Material three, I think that was also our material theme. I think that was also in the results. So if we look at theme, um, or it's in the import, maybe, I don't think it sees this though. So it must be material theme. Could be the path maybe, or material 3.kt. Could be this. Mm, how does it know it's using material theme? Could be UI slash theme. And then it just knows that means it's using, or it could possibly, I didn't see it in the response honestly, but it, if it could somehow see what we see in the search results here, then it would know it's importing material theme. Anyways, what I'm trying to get at is I don't think this is 100% accurate. So then it goes a little deeper and it lists a bunch of components, but I actually think this is pretty much all the components. <laughs> I don't think these are actually components that are necessarily used in this project. So here's one that I couldn't find it, it being used at all, modal drawer. This is a material design modal drawer that slides in from the side of the screen and contains navigation destinations. Cool, but is it actually using that? I don't think so. I mean, I haven't run this app. Maybe I'll run it later and find out it does. But there's no mention of modal drawer. There's no mention of modal. There's no mention of drawer. So I think it hallucinated that. I think it just did like a search in its data for material three components. And it used that instead of what actually is in the repository. So, um, I didn't catch that at the time. I moved on quickly from this, but then I, I, qu I queried the, the next layer down or I was like, okay, we know iOS is using Swift UI. At least I knew it from reading the repo or reading or some of the queries I did. I'll show you later. But my point is I ended up asking next, okay, what kind of components does iOS U UI use? I'm less familiar with Swift UI. I know about Material 3 components. I don't know about Swift UI components. So I was like, what kind of components does it use? Now check this out. Now it actually starts digging into the code. First, it asked for everything under the iOS um, path in the project. And that ended up leading to another query of everything in the presentation layer. So it's smart enough to know, so this is pretty cool, right, that this app uh, puts all of the iOS UI in a presentation folder. So that's pretty sick. I mean, it's, it's not genius knowledge, but like that's a junior dev knowledge, you know, someone off the street wouldn't understand that. I said, you know, you know, examine the iOS UI code. They wouldn't know. Maybe they'll figure out that it's under the iOS app, but then also have to figure out that it's in the presentation layer. Okay, I mean, if they thought about it hard enough, but most people would be like, what do you mean? Most people off the street, I mean. So it's obviously has some skills, right? Uh, let's go, it goes deeper though. And then it goes into every com every folder inside of the presentation folder. And it's not hallucinating at this point because we know it has the file structure because the very first response gave it, gave it back, I think the file structure, or at least the first one, I think what happened is it, it said, it said that there was an iOS app folder. So then it had a query, what's inside the iOS app folder, and it found uh, the, the first response gave it that as presentation, but it doesn't know what's inside presentation. So it queries what's inside presentation, and presentation, and it tells it has uh, components. So it's like it has to do multiple queries. But this plugin that ChatGPT is using here is smart enough to take one response's output and use it to feed the next one. So this is where these plugins and ChatGPT in general really becomes powerful, is being able to um, basically chain together commands and context and all that. So anyways, it goes through all the subfolders. News details is another one. Read, read later is another one. These are real. All right, so this is the, UI, the iOS UI in the app uses the following components. So the, these are the folders we saw. Components, home, news details, read later. So it, I don't think it understands what I mean by components. And that is kind of an overloaded term. So I don't I don't necessarily 
faulted for this. But when I say, maybe I'm using the wrong term too, but like when I say like a um, material three component, I'm, I actually probably am referring more to a compose, composable, I guess is what I'm referring to. I don't think people call them components as much as I do because they probably just call them composables. In Swift UI, I don't know what they call them. Um, so let's let's give it a little leeway and see what it come, came up with. But it has a folder called components. So if it only returned this, I think that would that would actually be a decent response because it's kind of what I was asking is whatever's in this folder is most likely a reusable UI component, right? So it's got a headline row and a snack bar. Um, it doesn't actually know. It didn't look at these code the code inside. It just says this file likely contains the UI component for displaying a single headline row in the news list. Okay, so how does it know that? Well, does it really? Okay, a couple of questions. How does it know it's a single headline row? I guess the headline row is singular, maybe. How does it know there's a news list? How does it even know there's news? Is it because of the name of the app? Or does it know down here there's a list somewhere? I don't see a news list, news details. So it may be kind of reading more into it than it actually knows. I think it's correct, but how does it know that? So I don't know, but it does say likely. And at somewhere it actually has a, yeah, it has a warning here saying, please note that this is a high level summary based on the file names and paths. For a detailed understanding of the components, you'll need to look into the code in these files. Okay, so it finally gave us an idea of what it's actually doing. It's just looking at the paths. And so these are just like, here's the names of the file in these folders, and it's most likely based on convention or its best guess doing XYZ. So, okay, fine. What does Home Swift do? This file liking it is the UI for the home screen of the app, which displays the list of news headlines. Again, how does it know this? Is it based on the repo description? Like what was that repo description again? Multi-platform project template, sample app of everything shared. It doesn't say anything in here. It must be could have maybe it read the readme? No, we looked. It didn't have the readme in any of the responses. So yeah, I'm a little skeptical of how it knows that part, but let's continue. So we know it probably made up the Android stuff. Also, this one wasn't used. There was a few of these that I checked that were not used and it said they were used. So we know. Oh, it also says please know that the usage of these components can vary based on the specific needs of the application. Okay, never mind. All right, jumping around a bit, sorry. Um, now I'm going to try to analyze a single file. So I say analyze the code in newsdetails.swift and provide ways to improve it. So I, I go a little beyond here. I want to. I don't want to waste all of my queries. I'm already running low, and so I said, look at this exact file, which you I know you know about because you told me about it, um, and then go beyond that. Actually, read the file and provide improvements or ways you would improve it, and so. This is interesting. This is the last query I do with this one, and it's because I ran out of queries. Uh, but check it out. Uh, so what does it do? It queries that file. It knows exactly where it is, and it just gets gets back. What does it get back? It must actually have access to the file then, because look at it. It gives back a URL. URL. Uh, is that it? Type file download URL. So does it actually download it? Content. Is this all the content encoded in base 64? Holy shit, it is. It it zipped up the uh, text or encoded it and returned back the entire file's text. That is cool. Um, let me try something. Decode base 64. Okay, it's got some interesting uh, artifacts here. I wonder if it's a different format or something, but you can kind of see the outlines of the code, right? There's a variable called headline here. It's got the uh, comments. I wonder if I'm just using the wrong, is that it? It's very short. Yeah, it's still like it's not fully decoded. I don't know, don't know exactly what it's using to encode it, so ASCII do. 
This is interesting. Uh, is it using the ISO standards? Because I wonder if it says I haven't encoded it. Oh, encoding just base 64 doesn't tell me any more than that. Anyways, okay, so it actually has the access to the file. Now that makes me wonder, does it have the access to the other files? I don't think so, because remember it said this is just high level based on file names. So even if it did return the data, I don't think it actually looked at it. Let's see. So it does have files. Download URL, but it's not actually encoded here. Okay, whereas this one, it was uh, content, that's what it was. Base. Yeah, so this is the only one we got back that was actually encoded. Okay, cool. So it encodes the content of the file and it knows how to decode it. Great, so here's what it does. It says the news uh, details.swift file contains Swift UI view for the news details screen. Here's the decoded content of the file, and it actually decodes it for me, which is what I was trying to do with this site. Cool. Um, I didn't necessarily ask for this, but maybe the way GPD works is it actually has to reprint all the code. Kind of makes sense, right? It can't just read base code 64. It needs to kind of print it. Once it's printed, it can then do the analysis. So it actually put the analysis down here. It gave us six, seven things that it would actually improve. And I read through this list, and I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty good. Like this is this is the sort of things that I, I could see myself recommending. Um, not having actually really read through this code, but already kind of seeing it falls for some of the basics. So this is declarative UI, if you're not familiar. Um, this is Swift UI, these V stacks for vertical com you know layout of components. Um, but I don't see it like importing, is importing, it does import shared, whatever that is, but it doesn't, it looks like it just uses the native stacking um, component here, but then it immediately j dives into, so it's got an async image, which is probably a native Swift UI thing, and then it immediately jumps into some business, lo or some like case logic here. So based on if the this API call is um, successful or not, this, I, I already can tell you that this should not be here. This is not UI. This is, okay, there's some, you could argue there's some UX here with handling failures and stuff, but, but my point is you can extract a component for this. You don't need to display this logic here at this level. It makes the code harder to read. We really want to know what the screen looks like, and I should be able to know that without having to scroll very much. But I can't because I have to look through, scroll, see, okay, if the image fails, okay, cool. There's a frame some kind, there's a spacer, there's another vertical stack with horizontal alignment. It has a text field, headline, all the font and stuff. Like, this is fine. This is just using a text component with some attributes and some padding, whatever. Okay, that's readable. A horizontal stack, okay, fine. So it's just like a stack with a text, so like a headline. Then the horizontal view, in here it's the author, the, um, the headline text, the headline published date, uh, headline description. Okay, so this is the header. So this whole thing could have been extracted as a um, headline uh, component or something. Like this is not, this doesn't need to be here. Like this could just be named something more, um, this could be extracted. Well, here's the headlines web view. So this must be the headline row, like header row. And then I guess this is news details, right? We saw that they had it, which is funny about this because we saw that they had a headline row. So I wonder if this is like duplicated code because this totally looks like it's defining a headline row. So uh, anyways, um, it's possible. All right, and then it goes into like this. This is all about for the, the the bookmarking part of the view. So yeah, there's definitely some cleanup here. But let's see what it found. So court organization or organization. It said the code in this file is quite dense, and could benefit from being broken down into smaller reusable components. That's what I'm saying, right? So I actually agree with that. Uh, this would make the code easier to read and maintain. For example, the code for creating the image view with the async image loading could be extracted into its own SwiftUI view. 100%, totally agree with that. 
Uh, what else does it say? Hard-coded values. There are several hard-coded values in this file, um, such as the frame sizes and corner radius for the bookmark button. So it's very explicit about the, it knows there's a bookmark button. So that's really cool. This seems very accurate. These could be extracted into constants, the top of the file or into a separate configuration struct. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not an uh, iOS guy. Um, I haven't touched in a decade, but um, we have ways of doing this in Android. I wonder, I'm assuming, I've done both. You know, there's sometimes you just put a constant. So I think this is actually accurate from as far as I can tell. Sometimes it, it makes sense to extract it into um, an actual, uh, what do you call it? Um, resource file or something or just put it as a constant. Um, this would make it easier to make changes to these values in the future. 100%. Error handling. So by the way, this is an example project. I don't expect it to be perfect. I don't expect it to actually do a lot of this. Totally makes sense that that's not what they're focused on. It's not a production app. So I'm not trying to nitpick this code. Thank you for ever made this library. Don't take it the wrong way. Um, I'm just trying to see if a tool like this could actually help a developer in their daily life. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't handle the errors like when the image fails. Code comments. This is recommending that you add more comments to explain the code. Uh, that's debatable. If you know me, I prefer readable function names or class names, component names. And if I need a comment, it's, it's more rare to actually need a comment than you think. Um, but this code definitely is not, uh, doesn't doesn't uh, explain what it does very well. So it comments could be a quick win if you don't want to extract things. Uh, UI improvements, the UI could be improved by adding more padding. This is interesting. I kind of want to test this, but um, maybe I will in a future stream. Let me know if you guys want to see that. But like it's suggesting that the margins aren't great and the font sizes and the visual cues, like a visual cue to make the app more user friendly. Like what would that even be? I like that. Like, does it have good UI UX design ideas? Because if it does, I would love to like use that to improve an app. Maybe I'll put in a pull request for this project or another one that actually like improves the UI by adding visual cues of some kind. That'd be really cool. Add some bells and whistles to the UI that ChatGPT recommended to me. So I wonder if that's true. I wonder if the padding is not great. Um, State management. Okay, so this is the snack bar state variable is currently not used in this code. Oh, interesting. Is that true? Let's see where it's mentioned snack bar. So there's a uh, snack bar. I'm, I'm guessing this is just if it's showing. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. I missed, didn't read it. Yeah, show snack bar. So if they're showing the snack bar, this is true. Um, obviously, this is some state in the declarative UI. So this starts out as showing and then something turns it off, it sounds like. But let's see, they have five references or four references in the actual code. Um, no, they don't. He's right. Or he, ChatGPT is right. I don't see if this is truly the real file, which maybe it's not. Let's go check for ourselves. Maybe it encoded it and decoded it wrong. Uh, I forgot what we were looking at. Details. Yeah, details. All right, let's see. Oh, is there more code? There's more code. No. Okay. I didn't, I think it missed this whole bit here. Is it missing this state? Or did I just not scroll properly? Wait, it's not scrolling, right? Am I crazy? Oh, sorry. I went to the bottom. Uh, I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, this is the one with the full text. It's not here. Ah, see, it starts here. Switch the state file contains this. Here are some suggested improvements. So it like ran out of memory. Oh, I wonder if we hit a cap on file size. 120 lines. Hmm, curious. Does they have a 120 line limit? That'd be just over, right? Or is it, yes, yeah, state dot state. Oh, it doesn't even make it that far. Switch state is the last thing we see. So switch state, and then it, get, it loses the dot state. It must be a word size thing. 
Interesting. Okay, so we found a flaw here. If you can't even read a full file, and this is a 150 file, 150 line file, which is nothing, especially for declarative UIs. They can get pretty crazy, especially when you don't extract stuff. So um, I don't know if this was a fluke. I don't know if it just like uh, broke down or if I ran it again, if it would stop at the same exact spot. But that could be a real limitation to using a tool like this. So I've been I've been talking about how the big flaw in analyze these code analyzers is that they don't know all the code at the, all the time. Like they they can analyze a single file most of the time, not even a full file. So the fact that this seemed to be analyzing the entire file seemed like a step up. But I think it's the same as the Visual Studio Code plugin, the Copilot stuff that I was using. It still has a cap, just like. Bing has a cap of 4,000 characters. I bet you this has something similar. So it should have, in my opinion, should have a way to, I don't know if it got cut off in the encoding side, like it just returned back partial file, or when it decoded it and it tried to uh, read it to improve it, if it got, you know hit the end of its limits. Either way, I would like to see the way for them to um, analyze maybe half of it um, and then summarize it somehow for themselves, then analyze the second half and then put put the two together somehow. And that might be hard, right? Like imagine meant, um, imagine it, it references at the top, it, rent, it references a function that's defined at the bottom, right? So you'd be analyzing the first 4,000 characters that it mentions a function. You know the name of the function, but you don't necessarily know how it's implemented. It's actually fine. Like if the function is named well, that's great. Like it, it can infer what it means. But if it's not named so well, it might need to actually look at the implementation, right? So it would have to remember that yes, there's this reference function that I kind of get, but I might be wrong. So wait until you actually read that function. The second half would have that definition of that function, but not know how, know how it's used. And so those two things would have to talk to each other. But again, you're out of characters, right? So you have to like slim down your analysis. So if it took 4,000 characters, if you can analyze 4,000 characters, you need to spit out like a hundred line summary or something and then combine them. And then, I don't know, you might have to iteratively go through the code or something or have some way of like jumping through a file. So if I mention a function here, like I only got a thousand characters left, I better go jump down and read that function before reading the next bit here. Like. I don't know how you would do it, to be honest, but it seems like a real limitation. The other way around this, and I don't know if this is like just it broken or just like built into the models or like the tools for interacting with the models, but if it's just a resources thing, like the API is giving you a 4,000 line character, then you might want to spin up your own services with your own model or get a copy of this model somehow, whatever. And there's some projects out there doing something like this and then you keep the context and the state in memory. And so maybe you can increase that 4,000 char 4, character limit if you're using your own computers. And so right now you're paying for an API and it's probably got these limits on it. But yeah, just a thought, that may be a real limitation to using something like this. But I do like what it came up with. And so um, I actually asked it, cool, thanks for the, the tips. Tell me more about how this actually works. I mean, it's just declarative UI, so it's it's some kind of UI. But uh, maybe I should have said what what does this look like when it's rendered or something. But anyway, so how does this code work? Here's what it said. Um, it says it, the file defines Swift UI view, so it knows it's a view that displays the details of a news headline. Here's a breakdown of how it works. I don't know that it's a headline. It's actually the details, but okay. Initialization. When the news details view is created, it is initialized with a headline of type headline domain model. And that domain model is most likely used in Android as well. That's one thing that this is lacking. It doesn't have that context to know that this is a shared model that works for Android and iOS. I know that when I read the README, but it hasn't read the README, so it doesn't know that. But that might be some helpful information to share and it, it can't do that. Okay, anyways, back down here. Uh, this model contains all the information about the news headline that will be displayed. It also initializes a state object that is an observable object from the news details view model. Let's look at that if we can. I don't actually see that. 
is that is that something that's not printed here but it actually does have in code so this might actually answer our question from earlier can it or I don't know if I said it out loud but can it actually see the rest of the code but it's just not oh no this was tor towards the top okay I don't know why that didn't print it didn't, oh it was there okay cool never mind um, so it does know about the view model. It does get the state from the view model. Cool. Great. And it's an observable from the view model. Okay, body. The body of the file is a scroll view that contains a vertical stack, the stack of the views. This includes an async image view that loads the image from the URL provided by the headline object. Depending on the loading side of the image, it displays a loaded image, a default image, or a progress view. Uh, spacer to add some space, another view stack that contains text views of the headline's title, author source, publish date, and description. These views are styled and padded accordingly. A headline web view, view the, the, that displays the web page of the news headline in a web view. This view is given a fixed height. Ah, that's why it thinks it's just a headline, because it's called headline web view. But it's actually headlines? It's not my understanding is that this is actually details for a particular headline so it could just be a bad name and it's guessing what it does a button view that when pressed triggers the news detail screen event save for later event in the view model with the current headline as the parameter this button is styled as a bookmark button so you can bookmark articles that you like cool uh, state management. The state object is an observed object, which means that the Swift UI view will update whenever the state object changes. This is used to handle the logic of saving a headline for later reading. Um, is that the only time it uses that state? Because there's a state passed in. Uh, I, th I would assume the image has its own state. Is it not part of this state? I'm curious. Okay, so the image URL you wrote to image phase in switch phase success let image image modifier failure image so it sets the image um, okay so this async image will show an image here or a progress view here okay so it handles its own state then you just pass it in a URL, which comes from the headline, which comes from the domain model, not the state. Okay, so there's no state involved there. Um, but the state got cut off, right? Well, I guess there was this state when the, which button was this? It's like when the button is clicked, or when the headline is clicked. Hmm. Is this the favorite or is this a different one? Can't tell. Oh, it is. Okay, this is the bookmark button. Yeah, save for later. Okay. So the save for later is called from the state. And then there's this one, which we think it doesn't have a, actually have access to because we think it got cut off, right? So it's saying uh, when the state is a news detail screen, uh, idle state, then show nothing. When it's loaded, uh, when it's finished loading, change the snack bar to add to read later. What is this? Huh. When it's saved for later. These are, is this a bug? I think I just found a bug. What? <laughs> these are duplicates. Am I missing something? They're not exactly the same. What's the difference? Um. Message constant empty view snack bar. What is different about these? Yeah, it's it's duplicated here and here. Um, yeah, I wonder if this app's not fully implemented because it's saying when it's successful, just show the empty view and a snack bar. So then it just I don't think this is using there's really any state here. It's just yeah, this is this is not really doing anything. There's no difference between save for later and success state. 
Interesting. Okay. I don't know. We'd have to run the app. Um, but what does it think the state is used for? State object is an observed object, which means that the Swift UI view will update whenever the state object changes. This is used to handle the logic of saving a headline for later reading. When the bookmark button is pressed, it triggers an event in the view model that handles this logic. So that's true. It does see that. Like it can see that part here. Uh, state view model on intent. So I don't think this would tell. Even if it could see this, I don't think it really says much. I don't think it's fully implemented. And then the preview provider, this is just to show a preview rendering of the, the view it, um, in the in Xcode, or I guess in this case, this is, I wonder if this works. So this is Kotlin multi-platform, which I don't know that, I don't know that it shows previews in, um, in IntelliJ, but that'd be really cool. I should run this for another stream. All right, in summary, this view displays the details of a news, see now it says details. Well, it's details of a news headline. Eh, it's debatable. Semantic. I think it's details of a news article. All right. It allows the user to save the headline for later reading. The actual logic of saving the headline line and loading the image is handled by the view model. I don't know about loading of the image. That part we proved is actually internal. Uh, handled by the view model and other parts of the code not shown in this file. All right. And I said, go ahead and improve the code by removing the hard-coded values for me. Okay, so now we're taking it one step further and we're having it write code for us. All right, so the sure how, here's how the, you can refactor the code removes the hard code values. And so this is interesting. It actually did it, that's fine. It just pulled up constants. Uh, I checked these, they're accurate. The name's a little weird. So like this is the image size and it's just one value. The reason it's just one value is because if you actually look at where this is used, the width is infinity, which must be a Swift UI thing. Um, for like uh, stretch width or whatever, I forget what it's called in, in uh, Compose, but um, yeah, and then so it's only the height, so a better name might have been image size height, or yeah, I don't know, but uh, it, it worked, it got, it got rid of the uh, magic numbers in the code, and these are also pulled out as well, so cool, it's made a small improvement, and I could have asked it to do the other ones too, possibly, uh, it probably would have struggled a bit with the ones that uh, if I asked it to, you know, create multiple files or something, I don't know how well it would have done that. Let's see. And does it still cut off? Yeah, it looks like it cut off even, even sooner this time. And here's where something weird happened. It started duplicating itself. This is actually the top of the file again. I thought maybe it was multiple files. It's not. It's exactly the same again see image size 90 190 so it just keeps repeating itself this yeah at the exact same part it repeated again and it just kept doing that until I stopped it so it got into a weird loop so there's obviously some bugginess here some weirdness going on with, with this plugin but I thought this was cool um, you know thanks for watching I, I broke down some of the logic or you know the magic of this thing and saw how it actually works I think we learned a little bit. I'm going to quickly show the other one, which I think did a better job at summarizing, and then uh, wrap it up from there. But uh, here's the other one. I actually did this one first, I think. I said, ask your code, which is the name of this plugin. And it's like, sure, here's what you can do with this plugin. You can download an index software project. You can delete all information about a project. This allows you to delete all information about a specific project. You just need to provide the project ID. So this is a little interesting. It actually downloads the code I don't know what this is using behind the picture like is there a, is there an ask your code website or something it's talking about project IDs and stuff so I don't quite understand what it's trying to do here but it seems to work differently than the other one and let's see so it can summarize the project a directory a file or a code construct and it could search for documentation or code constructs so I said go ahead and summarize this project and then it got confused. It says, apologies for the confusion, but the URL you provided does not a direct link to the zip file. So this actually doesn't analyze GitHub using GitHub's API. It analyzes code that it downloads. So this actually might be more powerful. Um, and so I ended up giving it the zip link to download from GitHub. And it started downloading it. And it said, I'll notify you as soon as it's completed. And I went off and I did that other thing, and it never notified me uh, after like 
30 minutes or something. So I said, what's the status? And it says the download and exit process for project is now complete. So <laughs> another bug. So this whole I'll notify you thing doesn't seem to work. And then um, when I asked for status, it says it's complete. Let me summarize. And so it made it, it made a query to check the status. Um, got a project code back and the progress is 100%. And then um, it tried to summarize that project using the project code or the project ID. So it doesn't have to keep requerying it. It has it stored on their server somewhere. And then it came back with this text, which is the summary, I believe. Let's see. Yep. It says the app project is caught with multi-platform mobile application, which I don't think the other one mentioned. Like, I don't think this mentioned multi-platform unless I'm mistaken or mobile sorry it didn't mention multiple platform but it didn't really say mobile in this high level description it, it listed it as one of the tags but it didn't actually say that this was a mobile project which is kind of key um, that provides news did this talk about the news everything based on share it's just a sample app again it doesn't say it's about the news so this didn't really this is missing some context but this one actually had that context so slightly better uh, it also says that it project uses uh, various technologies such as coin for dependency injection, coroutines, KTOR network operations, Realm for local view. So all of this is very helpful, but you know what? All of this is also from the readme. I'm pretty sure because I think I saw this. Let's see. Um, it's K KMM. It uses coin. But look how it talks about how it uses coin. I mean, maybe it's, look at it. it, says dependency injection is set up using the mighty coin. You just add uh, add your, it's even a typo, dependencies connect both hours. So this is a like a confusing way to say that it uses coin for dependency injection, where this says, this product uses various technologies such as coin for dependency injection. Unless it got, like, was it able to interpret the mighty coin? <laughs> the no, I guess it did say dependency injection. Or was it a tag that said dependency injection coin, coin Kotlin? Yeah, so I, I wonder how much it knows about coin. I'm just curious. All right, uh, coroutines for asynchronous programming. Oh, we talked about this. Go to operation realm. Yeah, where does it say realm? It did mention realm, right? Yeah, realm for local storage and caching. All right, and then uh, shared module. This module contains the common code that is shared between Android and iOS platforms. So I already find this more useful than this summary. I don't care that it has 247 stars. I care that it has these modules. Like that's, that's a better analysis. So already I recommend ask your code over the other one, 100%. Um, okay, it's got the Android module, iOS module, build source module. The module contains the Kotlin files that define the dependencies used in the project. The project also includes various configuration properties files for Gradle, Android, iOS. The readme file provides a brief overview of the project. Please let me know if you need more specific information about any part of the project. So then I said, same question as asked the other one, what Material 3 components does Android U UI use? And it kind of got stuck on this, which is very unfortunate because the other one, even though it hallucinated, <laughs> it gave the answer I kind of wanted. I wanted it to list them, but this was inaccurate because a lot of these are not used so they both kind of failed this one but it said it um, the project uses material theme component for the material th three library this isn't this is evident from the import statement found in km news steam so it actually read through the files and found an import so it's looking at imports that's that's awesome I wonder how it did that so I said look for material three and its response was an actual file. Lenino 3. I don't know. So these are all the references to Material 3. Notice it has a Material theme, color scheme, dynamic color scheme, dynamic light, like composable, import, local context. So none of these. Let me see what I get when I search Material 3. Like it doesn't talk about the top app bar or anything like that. Uh, shape. 
app bar. Yeah, so I would have expected to have found this one, the app bar. Or what else? Let me think. Cards. Oh, it does have circular progress in here. Okay, so maybe the other one was more accurate than I thought. Um, text. Yeah, so I would have found, you know, you should have mentioned card, text, uh, circular progress indicator. Yeah, so that it's missing some context. I, I don't know why it returned with these ones only. The Android UI of the Cam News app project uses the Material 3 component for the Material 3 library. This is evident. Did it? That's all it says. Okay. Material uh, theme is a fundamental building block of material design. It provides theming capability to the application. It applies a theme to all composable functions within its scope. However, without more detailed analysis or further search results, it's not clear which specific Material 3 component are used in the UI. The Material theme usage suggests the Material 3 components are likely used, but the exact components aren't specified in the results. So this is what confuses me. Further search results. Well, who told you like to only search the UI folder. Like, why did you do that? Because, let's see, that app bar, uh, it is in UI. So it's like, it again, I think we're dealing with a resource problem. Like, it doesn't have access to all the code all the time, all at once, or whatever. Um, everything everywhere all at once. And so it, it got back a limited number of imports. I don't even exactly know why it returned a list of imports. Like. Yeah, I don't know how this worked. Like, why did it only look at in this directory and only find this file? Because there's other files in this directory that mentioned material. And why only these are returned? And why these? Because, like, composable. Is this all from a single file? Let's look at that. Let's look at that. This one. So it's, is it just these ones? Looks like it, right? Is system in dark theme, material 3, dark color scheme system yeah so it's just this files imports like why would it return that I didn't ask you to return that like so something wrong with you guy what are you doing um, so it's saying it, it needs more search results well then go get them right so I said yes I need so it says if you need more specific information about the use of the material three components in the project please let me know I was like yes I need more specific information and then it says I apologize for the confusion but it seems that the search results are still pointing to the material three well why are the search results still pointing there what did you query Again, exact same query, except now you're saying it's it's Android X Compose Material 3. Okay, fine. Why are you looking at this folder? I never told you to look at that folder. I apologize for the confusion, but it seems that it's like the same thing. And first of all, let's start with so Cool. I said, no, I want you to query for me. And so what did it do this time? Same damn query. Except now it added the word import. So it's just adding more stuff, but getting back the same stuff. I apologize again. I said, read all of the code that are being used. And I hit my limit. <laughs> so sad. So this one started out really nice and kind of fell off. But I think I want to play with it some more. I think it probably just got stuck looking at a single file somehow. I've seen this with... Um, another tool which I don't have time to go into but there's this web um, project that you can um, use AI tools to build um, different projects all on the web and uh, it had the same kind of thing like I would ask it like what does this code do and it would read the first file and then stop and I go okay but what about the other files and then like eventually I realized you have to open up a file in this editor and put it in like recent memory wait some amount of time then query what does this file do and it actually looks at the latest file so it can only like look at so many recent files in its history is the way that tool worked this one I have no idea why it chose to look at this file all I asked it to do was summarize the whole project and then I asked it what material 3 components are using the Android UI and so oh I just realized it there we go it saw that I said Android UI, and so now it only wants to look like an Android UI. So actually, that's probably not wrong. That's actually correct then, because I didn't want the pre Swift presentation folder, right? So this is not bad. The problem is it only got back a single file. Why did it only get back a single file? Because if you look at what's in that folder, like it's all these components and stuff. Like why would it? Why would it only look at theme? So that's where it went wrong. Yeah, maybe maybe it knows that material is a. Th 
I don't know. I can't can't justify it. But maybe if I could tell it to look at other files, somehow it would have worked. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm still out of my time limit. But um, maybe I'll try again tomorrow. Please, please, please interact with this stream or video and let me know what you think. If you want me to do more of these, if you want me to change up the style, let me know. Um, but yeah, thank you for watching. It was fun going through this. There's probably three more of these that I didn't actually get to. But um, let me know if you want to see those, see if they do any better. Again, I have larger plans for some other experiments I want to do. I might spin up my own stuff at some point, but for now, we're stuck with this 25 messages every three hours limit. There's got to be a way to pay for more. Anyways, till next time.